I had a feeling going into that game we needed to be aggressive. And I loved our matchup offensively, and I just knew our guys would respond. And so, in, it's certainly in that moment, it felt like the right thing to do. And look, here, this, here's what I would say for, because I tell my family this, just wear a diaper before some of these games. And <laughs> I'll give them an alert, say, <laughs> put them on and be ready to roll. You know, it's actually sage advice from Dan Campbell, the head coach of the Lions. The diaper serves multiple purposes while you're watching a game. Don't have to get up and go to the bathroom. Oh, that's great. Right? Don't yeah. miss a thing. It's awesome. Right. Right? Yeah. Right? Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. It's just what I want to think of. Especially Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. The game takes like five hours. He said it. He <laughs> said it. I mean, my first thought was, my first thought was, the diaper seepage also protects against getting your kneecaps bitten. Uh, yeah, so thank you. there's another benefit to it. <laughs> thank you. You thought about <laughs> this morning. a little too much. Uh, I don't your, know why you're thinking en- so much your, about it. Enjoy yeah. your yeah. biscuits and gravy this morning, everybody out there. It's PFT Live, Peacock, Series XM85, Sky Sports NFL, and podcast where we get your podcast. I love the attitude. I love the approach. It's gut instinct. It's an accumulation of a lifetime of football thinking about it, coaching it, playing it, just you know in that moment what the right thing to do is. And if you're wrong, that becomes another little piece of evidence that informs your next decision when you're in that spot, inevitably at some point in the future. That's where analytics and reality have to split. You can run any number you want. You can concoct any formula under the sun, but there's no replacement for the organic computer that in some cases has had decades of experience, in other cases doesn't have as much but has a pretty good idea from all the years of being involved in football what to do, and you just make a football decision, not a math decision. You make a football decision in that moment based upon everything that's happened that day backed up by everything that's ever happened in your entire life. That's how these decisions should get made, Chris. Yeah, I mean, we we agree on that, right? I mean, I it, you know, analytics, there's certainly some big-time benefits. I totally understand that, you know. But, yes, I think being there on the field, feeling the game, the opponent you're playing, the way your offense is executing that day, what's your offensive line, how's it doing in the battle, in the trenches that day, do we feel confident there? I just think you're, you're right. There's a lot of things – that go into that. You had the numbers, the analytics, but feel for the football game, the situation, where your team is at energy wise, all of those things go into, you know, are, are accounted for, at least should be, by the really good coaches. I know they are. And Dan Campbell, I feel like he's getting more like that, right? Where, you know, years past, I would have been like, and, and I appreciate his gutsiness and the fake punt week one against the Chiefs. I mean, that was probably the play of the game that helped him win the football game. But, you know, the, the first two years, it kind of felt freewheeling to a degree. Like, it was just like, we're going to go for it every time. We're going to go, 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 go. This year, you know, it seems a little bit more calculated and a little bit more feel for the, the situation of the game. And, 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 of course, he has a better team. And I think that he's found the right balance there of, you know, aggressive but not reckless. And that's where I appreciate Dan Campbell. And it's, it's permeated through the rest of his football team. And every decision he's making now is the product of the decisions he's made in the past. So you kind of try and fail, yeah. try Evaluate. and succeed, yeah. right? and it puts you in a better position to make those decisions each time they come up. But obviously it was that fourth down play where they were in field goal range, but they went for it. And I believe the analytics said don't go for it, prevent. right? I believe right. that was right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, but but in a 38-38 game yes. where it's up and down the field like an arena football league Agreed. game, you want to keep the ball as long as you can before you make the final kick. That's just a, a little example of where, okay, let's set aside percentages yes. and let's look what we're dealing with exactly. here. We got Justin Herbert. We got 38-38. We got a defense that really isn't doing what we need it to do today. Right. Let's not put the defense back in position after it's been out there, given up that many points, to try to prevent 
a game-tying field goal, and then we go to overtime. Or, hell, for all anyone knows, the Chargers could have driven down the, the field and scored a game-winning touchdown with the amount of time they would have gotten back if he hadn't gone for it. So, yeah, I, I like it in that setting, and I like in any setting all things being considered. And that's how the rest of us, even if we're not directly involved in it, we see those situations play out. We file that away, and that helps kind of sharpen our own gut feeling for what's right in a given situation based on a game that we have sat and watched and we haven't missed a play because we've been wearing our diaper. Hey, that's disgusting. Stop saying that, okay? I've had enough of that, all right? I'd rather <laughs> you say 74-letter <laughs> words right now. The word that, uh, diaper. Okay. <laughs> The word diaper in and of itself is not disgusting. That's not that it's bad. But when you start to put details around it, diaper. it starts it's to get disgusting, okay? But but I agree that, you know, you, you know, you said it right. And with Dan Campbell, the way that game was playing out, I love the decision. I really did. And, and Justin Herbert was moving up and down the field, like you said. And there was going to be significant time. You know, if they – after that third down where they got – it was a third and 14 – uh, with with 151 left, they get 12 yards. Right there's 147 at the clock. There, the the, the 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 Chargers, excuse me, were going to have time not only to go down and tie the game, but the way they had moved the ball. To your point, probably going to have a chance, maybe a few cracks at the end zone, and that's what you don't you don't want to lose the game either. So there, to me, was a calculated risk and feeling the flow of the football game that uh, I thought was the right decision and good for him and damn good for the Lions, who are 7-2. and two. We're going to watch a meaningful Thanksgiving game with the Detroit Lions next week. I can't believe it. It's been a long, long damn time since that's happened. Well, it's meaningful for them. For yeah, change, that's, yeah, right. It's meaningful for right. them and not meaningful for the other team. For decades, it's been meaningful for the other team and completely meaningless for the Detroit Lions, they get a chance to steamroll the Packers the way they did back in week four on Thursday night. First time ever, has to be first time ever, that two teams have met twice on short weeks. The same two teams. Yeah. This is the right. first year they're using multiple teams on short weeks or multiple times for multiple teams on short weeks. The Saints, the Bears, the Packers, the Lions, I believe, are the four teams that get the short straw, straw twice and possibly the Steelers as well. But, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, it's going to be fun. And it's only eight days away. It's amazing how it's just kind of crept up. You get into November. Like, once you get past Halloween, it really is, before you know it, Thanksgiving. And then the Christmas season where you don't want it to rush by. You want to enjoy it. And it rushes by anyway. And then it's New Year's. And then the regular season's over. And we're into the postseason. I mean, we're on the roller coaster now. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.